the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry, presents The Cavalcade of America, starring Joan Caulfield as Emily Geiger. It was a September morning when it all began, the fateful autumn of 1781, that was to see the end of the American War for Independence and victory for the cause of freedom. On my father's farm in Fairfield District, South Carolina, General Nathaniel Green had set up his headquarters, for we were among the few patriots left in the district. And it was there on that September morning Lieutenant Colonel Lee reporting from scouting expedition, sir. At ease, Colonel. Uh, shall I close the door, General Green? No, it's all right. It's just Miss Emily Geiger at the clavichord. Well, what have you found out? A British force under Colonel Stewart has left Charleston, sir. Headed west for a rendezvous with Lord Rawdon's army south of here on the Congaree River. Hmm. You're certain of that, Colonel? Positive, sir. We intercepted one of their scouts on the way to Lord Rawdon. And if the British are sparing men from the defense of Charleston, it can mean only one thing. They intend to crush us here to clear the way for later movements by Cornwallis. And you know what that would mean. The end, sir. There's still one hope. If we could get word over to General Sumter at Camden, his forces combined with ours can engage Lord Rawdon now and prevent him from joining Stuart. They'll be expecting us to try that, sir. I doubt if our messenger would get through. Yes, I suppose so. Wait a minute. Music. I beg pardon, sir? Colonel, do you recall we used to use music as a code? Well, the enemy may be onto that by now, sir. Well, a musically-minded young girl going to visit a friend or relative might conceivably take with her a melody of her own composition to show off her progress in her musical studies. Are you, you're thinking of sending Miss Emily? Yes, it seems a dangerous mission for such a young girl. She's, she's only 18. She's a good horseman, Colonel. She's known to the people in these parts. And her very youth should exempt her from suspicion. In fact, Colonel, I am inclined to believe that Miss Emily Geiger is our only hope. If I had known how much depended on the mission, I'd never have dared to undertake it. I only knew that I'd been given a chance to do some small service to our cause of liberty. And with the message, whose contents I didn't know, pinned securely to the inside of my shift, I chose the fastest horse in my father's stable and rode out on the road to Camden. They warned me to proceed cautiously and keep a sharp lookout for British scouts. As I rounded a turn in the road near Cedar Creek... Oh! Oh, so I really aim at you this time. Oh, dear! Oh, 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 boy, oh. Uh, well, miss. Oh, I... Uh, good morning. Where are you headed for? The Phillips Plantation. Oh, I'm headed in the same direction. I'll ride along with you. Uh, if you're concerned for my safety, please don't be. I'm quite capable of looking after myself. I'm afraid I must insist. May I ask by what authority you interfere like this? My name is Merriweather, Miss. Lieutenant Merriweather on scout duty for the Continental Army. Well, why aren't you in uniform? This is British held territory. Farther on, this road is patrolled by British scouts 24 hours a day. Well, then you'd better, not, you'd better let me ride on alone. It'll be dangerous for you to be found with me. If you really are a Continental scout. <laughs> and uh, what are you, really? A civilian. Minding my own business. A young girl riding unescorted along a lonely road. Rather unusual, wouldn't you say? Oh, please let go of that bridle. I have a long way to go, and I can't waste time in idle conversation. Well, in such a hurry, too. You wouldn't be carrying a message for Lord Rawdon, would you, miss? Oh, certainly not. I'm a patriot. I mean, I... You say that with considerable spirit. Well, you may be a patriot, but nevertheless, I think I'll take you back to General Green's headquarters for questioning. Listen. Huh? What's that? Wait. Might be British patrol. Oh, I must get out of here. Please let me go. So you are a patriot. I shouldn't tell you, but but I... All right, I'm Emily Geiger. General Green is using my father's farm as headquarters. I'm carrying a message for him. Come on, quickly. Get our horses behind those trees over there. Come on, boy. Come that's, on. That's it. Come on. Here. Here, this will serve for cover. Now be absolutely still. Yes. Oh, who is it? 
what, sir? Tracks leading off this road. Well, they must be yonder, watering their horses. Come on. Have your pistol ready and remember our orders. Shoot. What do we do? I'll let them chase me the other way. When they're out of sight, run for it. Oh, please be careful. You too. Good luck. Good luck. Get up. Go. There he goes. The lieutenant was still out of range of their pistols when he disappeared around a bend in the road, and the British patrol followed him out of sight. Then I mounted my horse and rode off without looking back. It was nearly dark when I reached the Phillips plantation. I stopped at the gate, dismounted, and was leading my horse up the drive when... Steady, boy. Steady. Up where you are. Next time I won't miss. Mr. Phillips, it's I, Emily Geiger. Well, well, well. Bless me for a blind old fool. What are you doing in these parts, Miss Emily? Why, I... Well, I'm on my way to Camden to visit my Aunt Sophia. All alone? Why, yes. Your father shouldn't have allowed you to leave home. That road's not safe for anyone this night. No one shot at me on the road, Mr. Phillips. Well, I apologize for shooting at you, Emily. But we loyalists were warned that a continental scout might be riding this way. Oh, indeed? Yes, yeah, seems they're up to something. I don't expect you'd be carrying any messages for the continentals, though. Oh, it, it doesn't seem likely that they would trust me with a message, does it? Uh, it doesn't seem likely a young girl like you should be riding alone in times like these, either. Oh, why, Mr. Phillips? I believe you halfway suspect that I am a spy. Oh, how romantical of you. Well, I wouldn't put anything past those... Uh, well, you'll stop here for the night, of course. I was hoping to. I do just in time for supper. Go on in and speak to my wife. I look after your horse. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Phillips. Why, it's Emily Geiger. Come in, child. Mr. Phillips was kind enough to invite me to supper and to spend the night. Well, you're lucky he didn't blow your head off with that musket of his. Here, let me help you off with those boots. Oh, you're very kind. Now, let's get the other one. There. Does that feel better? Oh, much better. How are things at home? How's your father? Quite well. They say the Continentals are camped somewhere in your neighborhood. Oh, really? <laughs> Don't you know? I seem to remember your father used to talk independence a good deal. Well, he never talks politics to me. Well, he's quartering General Green and his staff, so he doesn't have to. Oh, is that what people are saying? Pretty scouts are thicker than flies around here. And, as you've already judged, my husband is very friendly with them. And... You, Mistress Phillips? Oh, I listen and keep my own counsel. General Green is too crafty to send a military scout through here with an important message. He'd be more likely to send an innocent-looking civilian. Maybe even a woman. Oh, Mistress Phillips, I... Clara, aren't you going to give this poor child a chance to wash up before supper? Oh, how thoughtless of me. Come, my dear, I'll show you up to your room. Uh, It's just at the head of the stairs, Emily. You go on up. Clara will fetch some water for you. But, Jonathan, I... I can find my way up, Mr. Phillips. Oh, um, uh, Miss Emily. Yes, Mr. Phillips? That horse of yours is in quite a ladder. I wouldn't ride out with him too early in the morning if I were you. Oh, but I must... I, I mean, well, Cousin Sophia is expecting me tomorrow evening. Oh, well, see how you feel in the morning. Yes, In the morning. (laughs) Uh, That girl never could tell a lie without blushing. A lie? Why should she lie to us? No, madam. Go up and fetch the water for her bath. Stay with her while she's bathing and search her clothing. What for? You know what for. You've heard the rumors that the Continentals are trying to communicate between sectors. But she's only a child. I'm for letting no one pass suspicion. And this girl's up to something. Now search her, I say. Mistress Phillips? Oh, 
Oh, oh, wait a minute. I brought the water upstairs for your bath. Oh, well, thank you. There's no need to lock your door in this house, Emily. Oh, well, of course not. I, I just didn't think. Being away from home alone for the first time, I suppose, is why I did it. Mm. Well, no matter. Shall I put the basin over here by the fire? I'll do it. Just leave the pail anywhere. Nonsense. You've had a tedious journey and you shall be waited on. Here, let me help you off with your things. Really, I- I'd rather wait on myself. But at least let me loosen your stays. I don't wear any stays. No stays in a figure like that. Oh, how I envy you. Mrs. Phillips, please. I was only trying to help with your body. Well, I'm sorry. I've, I've decided not to take a bath. You'll feel so much better if you freshen up. At least let me offer you a clean shift. No. Why not, pray? I just remembered. I had an attack of the grip. <laughs> the doctor put a flannel next to my chest and made me promise most particularly not to move it. He said the night air is especially dangerous. <laughs> my husband is right. You can't tell a lie without blushing. Blushing? Oh, perhaps I'm a little feverish. Where is it, Emily? What? The message. I don't understand you, Mistress Phillips. Pinned to the inside of your ship, I'll wager. What are you going to do? <laughs> my child, I have two brothers fighting for independence. Oh. I shall tell my husband that his suspicions are groundless, of course. But I warn you, the British scouts in this district are not to be put off so easily. You think them so likely to suspect me? They're under orders to suspect everyone. Well, surely they are gentlemen, and they wouldn't search a lady's person, would they? Not if they don't catch you. But I... And you have a fast horse, judging from the distance you've come in one day. If you ride out before breakfast, you will miss their patrol at the crossroads. If you strike out to the north from there, you can reach the Camden Ferry by way of the back roads. But won't your husband be suspicious if I ride out so early? It is better to be suspicious than to give away the whole game with those pretty blushes of yours. Oh, I don't know. I was so sure of success, and, and now I feel that... Tell me truthfully. Would it be better if I turned back now and and told General Green that I'm not equal to the task? If I said yes, what would you say, Emily? I... I would pay you no mind. Good. Go ahead, Emily. Godspeed. And I pray you are equal to the task. Listening to the Cavalcade of America, starring Joan Caulfield, sponsored by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Tonight on the Cavalcade of America, Joan Caulfield is appearing as Emily Geiger a young girl of revolutionary times engaged in a secret mission for the American forces. I slept fitfully in the Phillips' house that night. At dawn, I rose, slipped quietly out of the house, walked my horse to the road, and mounted. After some time, I stopped to give my mount a rest. Then I heard a sound that froze my blood. Two horsemen, perhaps more, overtaking me. I tried to urge my horse on, and he did his best, but they were gaining rapidly. Halt! Halt! Halt in the king's name! Ah! Why? Why, it's a woman. She hit I don't know, sir. Oh. Miss, are you all right? Oh, yes, no thanks to you. But but look what you've done to my mount. Oh, I think he's all right. Nothing broken. He's just sprained his foreleg. Come on, boy. There. See, he can walk. Now he'll be as fit as ever in a week or so, miss. A week or so? But I have to be in Camden by nightfall. Ah, that would be impossible in any case. It's our duty to take you in custody, miss. But I've done nothing wrong. Except willfully disregard my order to halt. 
Why? Uh, I didn't hear you. Hmm. How prettily you blush. Why, how dare you accuse me of lying? Uh, Corporal, I'll take the lady on my mount. You'll follow with her horse. Uh, take it slowly and be gentle with him. He's a fine animal. And we can use him if... Um... If what, Sergeant? That will depend, miss, on what Captain Gresham thinks of those blushes of yours. In here, miss. Well, Sergeant, what is this? Prisoner taken in custody, Camden Road, sir, on information of Mr. Phillips. Oh. Oh. Just as I thought. Your name, miss... Nellie Bates. Mr. Phillips has identified you as Emily Geiger. There must be some mistake. I don't know any Mr. Phillips. These are traps, Sergeant. Uh, yes, sir. A carpet bag and a reticule. What's this? A sampler with the initials E.G. Oh, oh, well, oh that, that belongs to a friend of mine. She asked me to take it for her to match the thread. At this moment, your face is a good match for my scarlet tunic, miss. Oh, well, I, I don't think it very becoming in a king's officer to criticize a lady's complexion, sir. On the contrary, I'm offering you a compliment. Your blushes are most attractive. However, we have information that leads us to believe you may be carrying a message for the enemy. But I'm not. We shall see. Under the circumstances, I'm afraid we'll have to ask you to submit to a thorough search. Well, what, what do you mean by thorough? Well, miss, uh, a thorough searcher. Uh, well, uh, uh, you'll have to uh, disrobe. Dis... Oh! Uh, she's fainted. Fetch some water quickly. Yes, sir. Mistress Jenkins, come in here. What is it, Captain? Is something that... Why, bless me, the child has fainted. Here's some water. Oh. Do, uh, do, do I just throw it on her, sir? Oh, you oaf. Not that great pail of water. Do you want to drown her? Hand me that flask of brandy. Right you are, ma'am. Now then, hold her head up. All right. That's it. <coughs> Oh. Feeling better, my child? Oh, oh don't, don't leave me. Stay with me. Oh, of course I will. Here, let me help you up. Here we oh, go. I feel dizzy. Oh, whatever brought this on, Captain? Well, I, uh, well, she just swooned away before I could explain that naturally you'd take charge. I mean, <clears throat> well, madam, the lady has got to be searched right down to the skin, that's all. Come along, Sergeant. Call us when you've finished. Well, miss, I take it you're well enough to get on with it? Get... On with it? Take them off, child. But but supposing the lieutenant should come back? Oh, there's a screen over there. Get behind it. Could I move it over by the fire? I might catch a chill. Uh, 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 no, you don't. You're not getting rid of any documents by throwing them on the fire. Not with old Mother Jenkins on the job. Now, come along. No more delays. I'd, I'd feel much better if you'd stay on this side of the screen and watch the door. Oh, very well. You can hand your things out to me. But none of your tricks, mind you. For I shall have but one eye on the door, and the other will be on you. Come now. Offer them. There was no hiding place behind the screen, even if I could have risked hiding the message. All I could think to do was delay as long as possible. I slowly removed my stockings and handed them one by one over the screen to Mrs. Jenkins. She tapped her foot impatiently. Garters. Where are your garters, girl? Well, what could be hidden in a garter? You heard me. All mm, right. Here. Here they are. And here's my gown. Mm. Well, this seems to be in order. Come on now, hurry up. Petticoats, girl. Petticoats. Well, I have only one. <clears throat> here. Hmm. Silk at that. Well, what are you doing now? But I'm down to my shift. Isn't that enough? Positively not. Now, hurry up, hurry up. Take it off. I was desperate, but I had to obey. I unpinned the note as quickly as possible as I slipped out of my shift. I glanced at it quickly, hoping to gain some knowledge of the contents. For now I knew I must destroy it at all costs. General Green had told me I would have no difficulty in memorizing it. But what I saw before me was simply a few bars of music, jotted down on a piece of paper... It was a melody I had played many times on the clavichord. But as I scanned through it, I noticed it had a strange ending and, and might have a hidden meaning. And suddenly I knew what to do. Mm 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thanks, child. Leave off the concert and get on with what you're doing. All right. All right. Oh, oh, hey. Tell the little pin. What? Oh, having uh, trouble with a pin. There. May I? May I get dressed now? Mm, as soon as I go over these seams. Oh, please. Fetch me some water, will you? What do you say? You feel faint again? No, no. I. I think it was something I ate. <laughs> What I had eaten was the message from General Green to General Sumter. Then, after I was dressed, Mistress Jenkins admitted the British captain. Well, I've searched every ruffle and seam, Captain. No message, eh? Nothing. My apologies, Miss. I apologize for the inconvenience we had to put you to. Did you hear me, Miss? Yes, it's quite all right, Lieutenant. Am I free to go now? Quite free. But my horse, he was lamed. Oh, I'll lend you one of our mounts to speed you on your journey. You may recover yours when he's fit again. But how will I ever find you? I dare say we shall be quartered right here in this farmhouse for some time to come. Did you have any reason to think otherwise? Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no reason at all. Well, I... I'd better be on my way now. I had hoped you'd stay and take dinner with us. Oh, I... Thank you, Captain. But I've already eaten. All the way to Camden, I kept humming those strange bars of music. But when I finally reached General Sumter's quarters, both memory and speech seemed to have failed me. The message, miss. Speak up, please. Where is it? I... I ate it, sir. Ate it? Yes, sir. And now I'm not sure I remember the tune. Tune? What tune? Well, that's all the message was, General. A few bars of music. Do you recall any of it? Yes, it it starts out... Oh, I I don't remember. If I could just pick it out on a clavichord... Now, there's one in the next room. Come with me, miss. Oh, Oh, Colonel Reed. Yes, sir? Reed, this young lady has a message in musical cipher. We formally sent secret messages in musical score. She's not sure she remembers all of it, but will you see what you can decipher? Yes, sir. Well, as I remember, it's, it starts like this. Um, um, that mean anything, Colonel? Not in our code, sir. The tune is Bonnie Prince Charlie. Bonnie Prince... Charles Stewart. Something about Colonel Stewart, perhaps. There was a rumor that he... Play some more, miss. Well, here's where it goes wrong. Oh, I do hope I can remember it. Let's see. It, it didn't seem to fit the rest of the music, but... Uh, D... Gee. Yes. Yes, that's it, I'm sure. Wait a minute. Wait till I get my code book. Uh, all right. Again, please. Slowly. I think I detect our code, General. G, G. No, wait a minute. British Force. F sharp G. No, wait. Colonel Stewart. E, 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 G. Left Charleston. A, D, Rendezvous. B, Congaree. A.G. Intercept Rawdon. Right. See that every staff officer receives orders. They're to make ready to break camp. We march tomorrow morning to join General Green's forces. Yes, sir. Miss Emily, you've done our cause a great service. The message did mean something, then. Most emphatically. If you had not got through with that message, it would have meant the defeat of our forces in this area. A crippling blow to the American cause in the South. Oh. Thanks to you, Miss Emily, we march tomorrow to join General Green's army and rout the enemy forces in this part of Carolina once and for all. And they did rout them. And our forces went on to greater victories until the news finally came that Lord Cornwallis had surrendered to General Washington at Yorktown. American independence was secured... And I was proud to have played a small part in the cause of freedom. All thanks 
thanks to Joan Caulfield and the Cavalcade players for tonight's Japan play, Girl on a Mission. The story of Emily Geiger, whose real-life exploit was taken from a little-known document of the American Revolution. <laughs> Next week, the star of the DuPont Cavalcade will be Robert Ryan in Listen, My Children, a portrait on a new canvas of a well-known American hero. Be sure to join us. Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade, Girl on a Mission, starring Joan Caulfield, was written by Robert Tallman. Music was composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Voorhees. The program was directed by John Zoller. Joan Caulfield will soon be seen starring in the Ross Stillman production, The Lady Says No. Ladies and gentlemen, the crusade for freedom can aid in the good and essential work of telling the people behind the Iron Curtain in Eastern Europe and Asia the truth about America's aims of freedom and peace. Join the crusade for freedom. This is Cy Harris speaking. Don't forget next week, our star, Robert Ryan. Our play, Listen, My Children. The DuPont Cavalcade of America comes to you from the Belasco Theater in New York and is sponsored by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. (laughs) 